You're with Ronnie Reels. He'll be taking on Roy Tapia on December 16th at Fantasy Springs in Indio, California. Ronnie, talk to us about the fight and the event. Um, well, it's a big event, you know. Um, this is a, obviously this this whole week is for pretty much saying bye to a living legend, which is Bernard Hawkins. So we're right. opening up the show. And in Fantasy Springs, I fought there several times, so it's, it feels good to be back. You know, I, I know the restaurants, you know, we have a schedule. Yeah. And the fight itself, it's just, um, obviously, Roy, I've, see, I've seen a few tapes of him, I've known him. But once I'm in that ring, you know, it's, it's a whole different story. There ain't no respect once that bell rings. You know, Tapia spoke very highly of you uh, as an amateur fighter. You were highly touted. You were one of the best in the unpaid ranks. He also spoke highly of you as a professional. But most of all, he was really gracious and <clears throat> spoke of you very kindly as a person and as a man. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, you know what? I, I appreciate it. You know, obviously we're gonna we're gonna fight. I don't I don't take it serious. I don't beat my opponent. Right. I don't have any anything towards like anything negative towards him. So. Um, there was a lot of respect and admiration. Yeah, you know, obviously in this sport, you have to respect one another. You know, the, the, all the best fights out there, the, respect, the fighters have so much respect for each other. Ward, Gotti, you know, those were classic matches. So this goes to show that you don't need to get in your face and do this and that in order to spice up a fight. This is going to be a good fight, you know. Yeah. So uh, I hope the fans can stay tuned and watch that fight. How well do you feel that your career has been going? You, as you mentioned before, you had that one loss and you feel that you've uh, revamped your last three camps. What is your thought as a professional and what your career has been going? Um, career is going well, but obviously we've had uh, some stretches of inactivity. So, you know, like I told my coach, you can't live in the past. You just gotta pick, you just gotta pick up and go. So obviously December 16th is the future and I would like to stay a lot more active, maybe three or four fights out of the year. So that's one thing that we're looking forward to. And um, just keep moving forward, man. Right. You know, a lot of uh, fight critics, a lot of fight fans, they say you are more of a technician. You're the boxer. Roy Tapia is more of the pressure fighter. How do you see this fight playing out? It's funny that you say that because obviously we've studied him, um, you know, so I like I don't want to reveal too much because obviously I can't really right, right. You can't reveal the, uh, can't game, plan. the game plan. But, um, they said the same thing about Gansio, you know, obviously look at that fight, that was an action but yeah. just, just take care. <laughs> now, what makes you better than Roy Tappy? What makes you better than Roy Tappy? Yeah. Experience, experience, you know. Obviously, you can't, you can't say you're more hungry than another fighter until you're in there. So, obviously, I feel like I'm more hungry. I know I'm hungry. Um, more experience, you know. Obviously, I found a lot better opposition. And this December 16th, you know, we'll see who's a better fighter. You're a natural 126 pounder. You fight in the featherweight division, but you mentioned uh, dropping down possibly to 122 because this fight's at a catch weight at 124. Why 124 pounds? Okay, so after my loss, you know, obviously uh, we went back to the drawing board. I, started tra I changed a lot of my training. I started eating better. I started resting better. And in the last few fights, I was underweight. So my coach was telling me, hey, you gotta get weight, you gotta get weight. Right. And after the last fight, I said, hey, you know what? I said, I didn't stretch me too. So I was like, all right, let's do it. And obviously I started I started um, eating better this time around and the weight's been coming out like you would like. <laughs> You know, I keep going back to this mutual respect that you and Roy have, but I have to mention this again. Roy had mentioned to me just yesterday that he was inspired by you to make his comeback to the ring after he had a split decision loss to Eric Ruiz. Talk to us about that inspiration that you have around other fighters, even a fighter that you're about to fight later this week yeah. or later next week. Excuse me. I mean, you know, like I can't really, I can't really talk about other fighters because, right. for, for, for example. I've always been like I've always want to fight the best. I've always pushed myself. I've always, you know, you know I've, I'm I'm the one that always like, hey, we got to do this, we got to do that. Just push it. So my family and myself, we I've always inspired myself. So I don't know like how right. I would say to someone else inspiring me, but you know, I've always I've always told myself I gotta get better. You know, I gotta improve.
improve. Um, for me, I never feel like I'm a perfect fighter. I'm a technique. How you were saying that? Oh, I've been seeing that. Right. For me, I feel like I'm still learning. Man. I'm still the up and comer. I still need to improve, and I know I do. Obviously, you know, we have a lot, so we have a lot to prove. And um, at 122, I want to prove a lot, and at 126 too. You know, so I have a lot to prove. It's pretty clear that you have the aspirations to become a future world champion. Where did it all begin in your amateur career? Where did it all start as a young man? Uh, I was 13 years old and my uncle Romero was taking care of me and uh, he's a big boxing fanatic. He still is. He goes to all the fights. And uh, he had a lot of ring magazines in the house. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so I remember the very first, the very first story I picked up was uh, Sugar Shane Mosley versus Vernon Forrest Part Two. Oh man! Yeah, yeah. I remember it was a, uh, I think it was a KO article that, that said, you know, KO is a sister uh, yeah. public publication. And uh, I read about it. It oh, was cool. And then the very first fight I saw, I think it was Mayweather versus Castillo Part Two. Like, okay. Live. So that was the first fight. And oh really? There, I started watching more. You know, I remember watching. Uh, 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 Okendo versus uh, Chris Bird. I remember. I oh, Fred, Fred, Fred so Okendo, yeah. I started watching all the fights and I started like, I fell in love with the sport. I was like, oh, you know, like, competitive drive, you know, to fight yeah. the guys and stuff. That's why, I, like, you and I were talking earlier, back in the older days, the fighters would fight everybody. You yeah, know? And exactly. Just because they lost once, they weren't ran off. They just kept coming back and fighting the best. Perfect example was uh, Hands of Stone. I don't know if you see that movie. Well, I'm going to watch it tonight. <laughs> Red Boss. It's like, oh, he lost once. And it took him a while to come back. I think it was like a year, but he came back and he started, you know, he went up his way and he won many titles after that, so. <laughs> Let's talk about fighters and losses. What did you learn from your loss? And what could you have done differently in that fight? Or do you feel that it was just meant to be and it made you a better fighter? Yeah, uh, you know, I learned I took that loss. I never made an excuse for right. to say that. What, what I could have done different was did to my left. I should have <laughs> to my left. That's what I did. I was this is too much to my right, and I and I was having my, uh, my back of the hand turned towards my body. Right. And obviously, I got caught, and yeah. I was never able to recover after that. So let's talk about the featherweight division. We got some young guys like Joseph Diaz, Oscar Valdez. Who are some of the guys that you want in the 126 pound class? If victorious, assuming that you are victorious over Roy Tapia, because you got guys like uh, Gary Russell Jr. Who are some of the guys you want at 126 or perhaps 122, as you mentioned before? Uh, I would like 122, you know. Okay. Obviously, I want Hasegawa, and then um, hopefully everything works out well. Uh, like I said, one fight at a time, so after that, hopefully everything works well. Hasegawa, I wouldn't like, I wouldn't mind fighting Rigadell, you know, like, like I've said. That's man. a great fight. I would like fighting the best, you know, uh, win or lose, just to go out there and try to prove something. Fight fans are asking themselves, who's Ronnie Reels? What does he bring to the table? What is your style like? Uh, I'm going to have to say stay tuned for December 16th, <laughs> and you're going to find out. We're going to find out? Yep. All right, all right. So give us a little more of a glimpse of like what you will be bringing against Roy Tappy. I know you can't give us the uh, the game plan, but what are some of the strengths and weaknesses you see in Roy? Uh, well, I think his experience is, his experience is you know, obviously what, um, what I have to capitalize on. And I think he... Um, I don't want to say because then I don't, if he's here, right, he right, okay. It. Okay, so don't have to tell his experience, his experience, and you know, um, I just hope he comes in shape, you know. I don't want Well, let's talk about the other big fight that's going to end 2016 Bernard Hopkins. Uh, he's going to be taking on Joe Smith in his very last fight. I believe he's going to be turning 51 or 52 years old the very next year. So he's only a month shy away from becoming an older man as he is. What do you see in that fight? And give us uh, something that you remember of Bernard Hopkins. Uh, I remember Bernard Hopkins. The first, fight, the first fight I ever saw him on live was Murata Park. Now, the oh, audience. man. Okay, I remember yeah, that. Yeah, the first fight I saw him fight. So, uh, what were your thoughts on Bernard, like the technician that he is? Because yeah. you're a technician as, as well. You're a surgeon in there. You uh, dissect your opponent, <laughs> no, just like, like Hopkins. Hopkins. Same characteristics. Yeah, but the thing is, you know, Hopkins went up from 160. He was probably considered one of the best 160 pounders in the world. He went up to 175 and he fought Tarver. Yeah. So you know, obviously his experience is there. I mean, his last fight was against uh, Kovalov, and he went the distance. Yeah. He, he showed a lot of heart. He, he finished the fight. Yeah. So I think this fight, I think it's going to be a boxing match, in my opinion. Does it, does it inspire you to see someone like Hopkins who was the underdog against Felix Trinidad? He was the underdog against uh, Antonio Tarver. I mean, he's been the underdog many, many times. I mean, heck, he won the title at 46, 47 years old. Yeah. 
Does that inspire you to I mean, accomplish all the goals in your life as a fighter? Yeah, it, it inspires you a lot because obviously you, your window of opportunity in this sport is 10 Very years. small, yeah. But you've been proving it, what, 30 years? Yeah. Yeah, you've been proving it 30, <laughs> like almost 30 years, so obviously it, uh, it makes you wonder, like, oh, you know, if, if I live that, because I know he lives a very healthy lifestyle. Yeah. He's a vegetarian. Yeah, he's a, he's a vegetarian? Yeah. See, so yeah, I couldn't do you're that. You're gonna have to do that. <laughs> I have to eat steak. <laughs> <laughs> now, have you had uh, any conversations with Bernard? Yeah. I've, what I've, have you learned from Bernard? What, I mean, what, what kind of advice has he given you? He's never really given me advice. Okay. I've just said hi, you know, how you doing? And uh, that's about it. So he's never he's never given me advice. Uh, Zeb Judah has given me advice. You know, Zeb Judah. Judo was on one hell of a fighter, man. Yeah, Judo, he was one of my first fighters before. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that guy was very athletic, though, man. He was very athletic, bro. Well, I guess, you know, his dad used to say that he was a disciplinary. Yeah, exa exactly. I mean, you know, I started to rice with him. Uh, I spoke to him a a couple times. He's a real cool guy. Um, Brandon Rios, too. Uh, you know, obviously, they're going to fight each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's going to be a great one. Real yeah, versus Ortiz. That's going to be a hard one, you know, but those are... You know, talk, talk to us about uh, being a disciplined fighter. How difficult is that? You know what, man? Before, honestly, I used to think I was disciplined before I lost. Yeah. But I used to have, like, hot, a bag of hot Cheetos a week before the fight. I used to have soda. I used to have... Uh, ice cream and then yeah. like now like I, I see it and it's like oh whatever yeah, man. but before i was like oh, i would have a little bag or something now it's totally away totally away from me now so yeah, you got to make those changes right you gotta make the, hey you want to succeed in this life you get you have to sacrifice something right? how soon do you see yourself uh fighting for a title uh hopefully this year you know this just Get ready for December 16th, and then hopefully we'll go. 2017 is going to open up a lot of doors and a lot of opportunities. Yeah, I hope so, man. That's the plan. That's the plan. That's the goal. <laughs> if you have any final words to your fight fans out there, let them know why they should tune in on December 16th. Now's the time, my friend. Uh, for the people that, so, that, that have supported me throughout everything, I just want to say thank you guys. You know, obviously we had a little hiccup, and uh, there's some people that have uh, came up to me after the fights. So I just want to say thank you guys. Without you guys, I uh, wouldn't be here. I want to dedicate my future wins to you guys. Thank you guys so much. Well, we look forward to it. I'll be there. I'll be covering it. Uh, it's going to be a great fight, a great fight card. Thank you.